Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepak Shikurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Monday, the 20th of June. Protesters block trains observe shutdown against new military hiring scheme in India. Millions stranded as monsoon rains wreck havoc in Bangladesh and India. And Sri Lanka opens IMF talks for bailout as economic crisis worsens. And now for all the details, scores of young men aspiring to join the Indian Armed Forces blocked railway tracks as they observed a nationwide shutdown on Monday against Agnipath, the government's new military recruitment scheme. The hiring plan, unveiled on June 14th, sparked violent protest in parts of the country last week after which the government tweaked some of the rules. Protesters demonstrating against Agnipat, the Indian government's new military recruitment scheme, blocked railway tracks and staged demonstrations as a nationwide shutdown was observed by student groups and opposition parties on Monday to demand its rollback. Critics have argued the hiring plan will drastically cut tenure and offer fewer service benefits, while only 25% recruits will be retained at the end of their four-year terms. The scheme sparked violent protests across the country last week after it was unveiled on June 14. The government tweaked some of the rules amid the protests including a one-time relaxation in age restrictions from 21 to 23 years. This is not only the situation of the young people. The young people are very big problems, very bad problems. But the character, the character of our forces has a question on it. Security across several major cities was stepped up on Monday and an alert was sounded in the wake of the protests. Though there was no major effect of the shutdown, train passengers had to wait for many hours at railway stations in several cities as about 500 trains had to be cancelled or delayed. On Sunday, a top Indian Army official said the recruitment plan will not be rolled back and enrollment under it will commence this month. Around 46,000 cadets will be recruited this year. And monsoon rains in low-lying Bangladesh and India's northeastern Assam have triggered catastrophic flooding, killing at least 54 people across both the South Asian nations, officials said. Millions have been stranded amid fast-rising waters and swollen rivers as authorities scramble to provide aid. Residents of a town in northeastern Bangladesh navigated through flood streets on Monday as the country experiences what officials have called some of its worst monsoon floods in recent history that have killed at least 28 persons. Around 300,000 people have been moved to shelters in worst hit Celiot, but more than 4 million people are stranded near the inundated homes. Many of Bangladesh rivers have risen to dangerous levels and their runoff from heavy rain from across Indian mountains exacerbated the situation. In the neighboring state of Assam, where at least 26 people have been killed since heavy rain began around a fortnight ago, flood waters have started residing, authorities said. But nearly more than 200,000 staying in makeshift shelters run by the government as authorities scramble to provide aid. अभी तो सुबह से मतलब कैंप में है अभी आप ये बांध पीड़ित लोग हैं इससे आप पूछ सकते हैं खाना पीने का कोई तो ऐसा व्यवस्था हुआ नहीं अभी तक ना हुआ नहीं ऐसा डीसी सर आया था डीसी आया सर्कल आया आपका वाटर सप्लाई वाला अभी जो आपका पानी का व्यवस्था है वो करने के लिए आया हाँ वहाँ पे आप बांध प्रोटेक्शन दे रहा है सेवरल डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट टीम्स हैव बिन डिप्लॉयड इन आसाम टू हेल्प इन सर्च एंड रेस्क्यू एफर्ट्स India and Bangladesh have experienced increasing extreme weather in recent years, causing large-scale damage and environmentalists warn that climate change could lead to more disasters. 
Well, in news from Pakistan, in the wake of a record hike in fuel prices, Pakistan's ousted Premier Imran Khan has warned that inflation is set to rise further and the country is headed towards becoming the next Sri Lanka, which is suffering its worst economic crisis. Virtually addressing party workers on Sunday, Khan asked his supporters to ramp up protest against the incumbent government till the announcements of fresh elections. Pakistan's ousted premier and opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan on Sunday warned that inflation is set to rise further and the country is headed towards becoming the next Sri Lanka, which is suffering its worst economic crisis since independence. Virtually addressing supporters of his party who held nationwide protests on Sunday night after a record hike in fuel prices, Khan asked people to ramp up their struggle against PM Shehbaz Sharif's government till the announcement of fresh elections. While comparing his tenure with the incumbent government, the PTI chief said that his government had rolled out subsidies and distributed health cards despite being in the IMF program. The other is that Pakistan कि ये उस तरफ जा रहा है जिधर श्रीलंका पहुंच गया और वो हम मुझे खौफ ये है कि हमारे पास जिस तरह ये हमारी अब रिमिटेंसेस गिर रही हैं हमारी 10 परसेंट एक्सपोर्ट्स गिरी हैं पिछले महीने जिस तरह ये ट्रेंड जा रही है हमें खौफ ये है कि हमारे पास डॉलर नहीं होंगे He said the current government was claiming that he had laid landmines by giving out subsidies but the fact was that the PTI had increased petrol and diesel prices by just a few rupees, while the incumbent rulers had raised it by more than rupees 100. Imran Khan was ousted from power in April through a vote of no confidence, and since then he has held several rallies, building pressure on the coalition government to announce a date for fresh elections. Moving on, a protest was recently held by locals in Pakistan-administered Kashmir to express anger over frequent load shedding in the illegally occupied region. The protesters blamed Pakistan government has failed to provide them even their basic amenities and have left them high and dry. Scores of locals recently held a protest in Pakistan-administered Kashmir against frequent load shedding in the illegally occupied region, which has crippled life and their livelihoods. The protesters express that they are unable to run their businesses and their children are unable to carry out their studies due to unscheduled and prolonged power cuts, which give them a distressing time. They demanded that they should be given at least 400 megawatts of electricity for free. Despite having mega dams and hydropower projects like Neelam Jhelum hydropower plant in the region, they have to face such a situation. The protesters want that they will march towards the assembly if their demands are not met. हम ये कहते हैं कि ये रियासत हमारी है इस पे सर पर हमारा हक है हमें कम से कम जो 400 का बात की है वो हमें मुफ्त दी जाए ये हमारा हक है Locals have time and again accused Pakistan of melting out of stepmotherly treatment to the illegally occupied region failing to develop the infrastructure and leaving them high and dry However this seems a new low that Islamabad has stooped to in order to harass them in news from Afghanistan, militant group Islamic State has claimed the attack on a Sikh temple in Afghanistan's capital, Kabul, over the past weekend that killed at least two people and injured seven. The attack was another deadly incident in a spate of violence targeting minorities. Militant group Islamic State has claimed the attack on a Sikh temple in the Afghan capital, Kabul, on Saturday that killed at least two people and injured seven, another deadly incident in a spate of violence targeting minorities and places of worship. A Taliban Interior Ministry spokesman said attackers had laden a car with explosives, but it had detonated before reaching its target. 
The official said one Sikh worshipper lost his life in the attack and one Taliban fighter was killed as his forces took control of the area. Islamic State in a statement said the attack was in response to insults leveled at Prophet Muhammad, an apparent reference to remarks by a former spokeswoman of India's ruling party that have been condemned by many Muslim-majority countries. The blast on Saturday was widely condemned by UN officials who urged that minorities in the country needed to be protected. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi said he was shocked by the attack. Since taking power in August, the Taliban say they have increased security and removed Afghanistan from militant threats, although international officials and analysts say the risk of a resurgence in militancy remains. An attack at another Sikh temple in Kabul in 2020 that killed 25 was also claimed by the Islamic State. Sikhs are a tiny religious minority in largely Muslim Afghanistan, comprising about 300 families before the country fell to the Taliban. Many have since left according to the members of community and the media. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan authorities on Monday began talks with the team of the International Monetary Fund on a bailout program as the island nation faces its worst economic crisis in seven decades, which has led to acute shortages of fuel and other essentials. Sri Lanka expects four to five billion US dollars from the IMF to further access bridge financing. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe on Monday opened talks with a team of IMF, the International Monetary Fund, on a bailout program. As time is short for the country, just days from running out of fuel and likely months from getting any relief money. Economic mismanagement and the COVID-19 pandemic have left Sri Lanka battling its worst financial problems in seven decades and a lack of foreign exchange has stalled imports of essentials including fuel, food and medicines. The island nation suspended payment on 12 billion US dollars of foreign debt in April and sought IMF support to put its messy public finances on track and excess bridge financing. PM Vikramasinghe had earlier this month said an IMF program is crucial to excess bridge financing from sources such as the World Bank and Asian Development Bank. IMF program will provide access for other financing options. That would be the main way that we will get the help. But IMF had already said that they are mainly uh, considering the debt restructuring process to provide the assistance. Miles long snaking queues have formed outside most fuel pumps since last week. Schools in urban areas have closed and public workers have been asked to work from home for two weeks. Sri Lanka expects around four to five billion dollars in loan assistance from the IMF and the future course of action on borrowing will depend on the conclusion of agreements. The IMF team will stay in Colombo until June 30. And members of the Hindu community in India's Jammu and Kashmir staged a demonstration outside the UN office on Monday on World Refugee Day in the wake of a recent spike in targeted killings of non-Muslims in the region by terrorists. They demanded Pakistan should be declared a terrorist-sponsoring country, blaming it of involvement. Members of the minority Hindu community in India's Jammu and Kashmir protested outside the United Nations office in Jammu city on Monday on the occasion of the World Refugee Day. The protest came in the wake of recent targeted killings of non-Muslims and migrant workers by terrorists of Pakistan-based terror outfits in the Union territory. The protesters demanded Pakistan should be declared a terrorist-sponsoring nation. They said they have been reduced to a minority in their own country. हम अपने देश में ही रिफ्यूजी बने हुए हैं हमारा जेनोसाइड हुआ है हम चाहते हैं कि हमारी बात योनो में उठे जनरल सेक्रेटरी जो योनो के हैं वो हमारी बात भी करें वो बताएं दुनिया को इनके साथ कैसा विवाह हुआ है ये टेररिज्म के शिकार हुए हैं और वो टेररिज्म आया कहाँ है उस टेररिज्म की माँ कौन है उस टेररिज्म की माँ है पाकिस्तान हम चाहते हैं कि पाकिस्तान को टेररिस्ट कंट्री घोषित किया जाए More than a dozen have been killed in the wake of targeted civilian killings in the Muslim majority Kashmir Valley. Terrorists have battled India's rule in Jammu and Kashmir for more than 3 decades. A revolt it blames Pakistan for having stoked. Islamabad denies this. 
saying it provides only moral and diplomatic support to the Kashmiri people. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.